everyone, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping. Today I'm going to help you learn how to break out your tenant security deposits on your balance sheet correctly. I will also show you how to write off tenant security deposits that you no longer owe. For instance, if the tenant moved out and didn't pay the, their last month of rent. Um, and finally, I'll show you an example of a nice looking balance sheet that your CPA would be happy to see. All right, let's get started. Okay, guys, let's say you're trying to get your books ready for year end and your accountant asks you, is your tenant security deposit payable correct? Now we're gonna do an easy scenario here. And I have some other videos on how to going forward, do it a better way. But this is gonna be kind of a down and dirty, get your books ready to have your tax return done and make sure this number right here for tenant security deposits payable is correct. Watch the other videos to learn how to make an item and things that are more detailed going forward. Okay, so right now, how I wanna play this out is let's pretend that you had five tenants and each had a $2,000 security deposit. Okay, and now let's say that two have moved out. So you really only are holding security deposits for three units and you have two vacant units as of December 31st. So the question is, how do we get this from 10,000 to 6,000? And what do we do with that 4,000 that happened? We're also gonna assume that you did not pay those other two tenants their 2,000. So two tenants at 2,000, $4,000. So what probably happened is they skipped out on their rent and now you're allowed to use that security deposit. You're allowed to take it out of the security deposit escrow account and move it into your operating. Okay, so I will show you how you fix your books for year end. And then, like I said, Watch the other videos on security deposits for how to do a better job going forward or to work with your bookkeeper or yourself on how to track this better. You really don't want to have just a blanket 10,000. I prefer to see each unit, okay? Okay, so I, I went and made some tenants, one, two, and three. I didn't make the four or the five. But the first thing you would do is you should make sub accounts under this tenant security deposit payable. Now this is a demo file and I did some other things for 2021 in another YouTube. So just ignore those because we're running this report as of December 31st, 2020 in the thought that you're trying to get ready to get that tax return done. Okay. So the first thing we would do is see we have A, B and C. That was for a different um, video. But how would you do this? Now, remind, remember, in our scenario, you only owe three people money, okay? Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is we're in the chart of accounts. We're going to make it a sub account of our tenant security deposit. And we are calling these tenant one, two, and three. Okay, so again, you can just say, see, there's my one. Okay, so now as of, now this number has a 2021 number on it. But what we're trying to do is in your parent account, and I call them just baby accounts, right? Because we call them parents, so then that would be the baby. Um, we want to move money from this parent. That's so annoying when it does that. Um, so we want to get it out of here. See, we have 2025 in a baby account, and then we have 10 just sitting up in the parent. So how, what's an easy way for someone who is not an accountant or bookkeeper and does not understand journal entries. What I would do is go into tenant number one, who we said we owe $2,000, click view register. Okay. 
Okay, so I said we don't do journal entries, but this is really more like registry entering, register entering. So you're gonna click journal entry here, but you can think about what you're trying to do and it's not so difficult, right? So we are posting, we're gonna increase our tenant number one. That's where we're at. We owe that security deposit. So tenant number one, security deposit held. So we're gonna increase this account by $2,000. And what we're gonna to do to decrease that parent account is we're gonna to go to the top and pick this main parent account. Back to the chart of accounts. We did, I have a little list here. We did number one. And then we'll go to, see now number one has 2000. Now we'll go to number two. We'll add the journal entry. Make sure you're doing it for the last day of the year because we're fixing 2020. We're increasing and then we're going to go to the parent account. Because we want, we never want anything. I teach my bookkeepers and anyone I train, you never want things in parent accounts, okay? If you have sub accounts, make sure you always pick a sub account and not a parent account. Because then your PL and balance sheet look weird. Okay, so now we've got 2000, 2000. So we've got to do tenant number three. It's always good to put notes because what if I'm doing tenant number threes, but I actually put it in tenant number two? I'll catch my mistake when I look you know, at a report. And we're gonna decrease the parent. I'm a little concerned that I did tenant number one wrong. Let me see if I have the date. See, I picked the wrong year. Okay. Okay, guys, now look at our balance sheet now. Look how nice this looks. It says tenant number one, 2000, two, and three. But we still have this issue of this 4,000 that you know you don't owe because these people skip, skipped out on their rent on you. So what do you do with that? It is actually considered rent. Now, I know you're going to say to me, but they trashed the place and I had to use all that money to fix the apartment. That's fine because every dollar you spent to fix it will be an expense and it'll wash out this posting. So don't shoot the messenger. It really is rent because you have to have some sort of entry to take it off as a liability, okay? So what you should do, and I show this in my other videos, is you should be keeping an escrow account and then you're operating. Once it's determined that they have left and you're not going to pay them anything out of your escrow checking, you would transfer this money into your operating account. And then you could pay for the expenses to rehab the unit. Okay. Once again, that's in full detail on my other de security deposit video. This is more of a video just on getting ready for your taxes, cleaning it up and fixing your balance sheet. Okay. You should also always, I think, keep a Google sheet or an Excel spreadsheet regarding your tenants. It's weird. Sometimes you can have a tenant for, especially in a commercial um, situation. It could be a long-term lease, 10, 15, 20 years. I've had a new client come on, many of them, not just one, and they had really no proof anymore of how much that person had paid. You know, so make sure you are, I mean, you really still need paper copies, those leases and photocopies of the checks. So 20 years from now, you can prove what you show you owe them. Um, also make sure you step up their security each time their rent increases. Make sure you collect that. Don't get sloppy and we're lazy and think, oh, it's just $25. What if you have them for 20 years and it keeps stepping up? You will then in 20 years, thank me for making sure you kept your security in line with that lease. Okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox. 
So what I would do now is we will go back to the chart of accounts and move this. And then I will show you the transfer because there are two different things if you're moving money from your escrow to your operating, okay? Okay, here we are in our tenant security deposit payable. We know we have $4,000 that we need to get out of there. How would I do it? I would click view register. Okay. You're going to add a journal entry as of 1231-2020. Do two entries. Don't do don't try it's always best to do everything individually. Okay. Reduce liability for tenant number four, broke lease early. Okay. Then think about it. This is why I'm not having you do journal entries and have you go on the register because you can just think in your brain, like, which way do I need to do this? Right? So we want to decrease your liability. So we're going to post in the decrease section and we're going to say $2,000. And then I know don't kill the messenger, it is rental income. But anything you, and I'm not going to, we're just hitting regular rental income. I didn't make sub accounts. That's like in my other video as well. Um, anything that basically they may have been there for their last month or maybe they didn't pay you for months and months and finally left that it's just, you're only claiming rental income for the 2000 you were holding. And then anything, you had to pay out to rehab the unit, you get to expense that. So make sure you know, you're capturing all those expenses. This one, let's say, and the attendants do this all the time, even though they're specifically told not to, they say, oh, use my last month for security. And then you still have all kinds of repairs you have to do. Okay, again, we're going to decrease. Okay. And another thing to think about is that you never want to send your QuickBooks to your accountant unless your balance sheet makes sense. I have a video on balance sheets. Let me just write that down. I'll put a link in it as well. And it's just how to read a balance sheet and it like not let it scare you. It's really um, not that hard and you should become, this is one thing I say is more important than checking your profit and loss. One accountant taught me a long time ago that your books are not right if your balance sheet is not right. So always work on the balance sheet. Okay, so for instance, if your any of your checking accounts were negative, you probably have a problem unless you really were negative. Same thing with a credit card, should be positive. Okay, now look, we have nothing in the parent account. It's down to zero. We were at 10,000. And now we have 2,000, 2,000, and 2,000. And that's it. Now you have a good, um, you know, you can look at any time and know how much you have of attendance money. And it looks so much better than just a blanket, even a blanket 6,000. You're gonna to have to go through so many accounting records to figure that out. Going forward, you should start, like let's say you had two more units, you could start an account for tenant number four and tenant number five, and then easily track those. Like I said, I have another video on this. It goes into all the detail. This was, let's just get you ready for your tax return. But I will show you the one last thing that let's say you're entitled to move that $4,000 out of your escrow account and into your operating, how do you do that? I would go up here. I'm going to hope you have online banking and you could just simply do a transfer. Okay. And I never use a transfer um, option. Please don't. I don't allow it at my company. We always use everything as expense. Don't use this transfer. The reason being, if you make a mistake, if it's not a balance sheet account or there was a problem, you can't edit it. So we do not use the transfer option in QuickBooks Online. Just go up here, click new, choose expense. And then we're gonna go up, here's our security deposit account. 
we're going to say we did this on the last day of the month, but it could be any day. We have another Chase regular checking. And right here, you would say transfer of tenant number, what was it? Four and number five. And I had 4,000. You're probably going to be cash basis. Okay, so again, here we go. And then here we moved money out of our security deposit and into the checking. And you can see the transaction here. This was me adding to the account before. Okay, guys, so this is how you would fix at your end and make sure your security deposits match what you really owe. You, Depending on um, your entity structure, you know, this is really important that this is uh, recorded and reported correctly to the IRS. So this is a good time to really go over your list and assess um, not only do, is your balance sheet correct, but do you need to collect more rent from some of your tenants and have they not been paying the step up um, that's set in your lease? That I see that uh, forgotten quite often. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. Please leave in the comments below any other landlord videos you'd like and have a great day.